Okay, in this video we are going to learn how to make a spoon. So to make a spoon, we are going to start with a sphere, kind of like the bowl. So I'm going to, going to delete this cube, press delete on the keyboard, and click delete. And we're going to add a sphere, so shift A or however you like to add a new object, UV sphere. Okay, got the sphere here. I'm going to cut it in half, the top off, just kind of just like the bowl. However, I'm going to cut a little bit more off. So I'm going to go to a front view, one on the keypad, and five perspect or uh, go into orthographic view, and Z actually first, sorry, tab to edit mode. So go into edit mode and then Z for wireframe, and I'm also going to select face select. Okay, so A to deselect everything, and B for border select, and instead of, instead of just selecting half of the sphere like we did with the bowl, I'm going to go a little further, in fact, maybe down this far, um, because a spoon isn't as deep as a bowl, and we don't want, we don't want it as deep, so we're going to delete a little bit more. Press delete, delete faces, and there's our the bowl part of our spoon or the scoop part and that is way too deep and so we're going to adjust it still so I'm going to tab out to object mode and pull it up above the grid as I like to do and tab back into edit mode now if I select all of this a and I can squash it again I um, I can come down and select this scale tool or I can just use my shortcuts and scale it. So if I press S to scale, it scales smaller, but if I constrain it to the Z axis, which is the blue one, up and down, so I press, uh, I've already pressed S, and then if I press Z after that, it constrains it to the Z axis, kind of squashes it. So whichever way, shortcuts or, you know, using the mouse tools with the mouse. So we're going to squash that down pretty flat like a spoon but there's another issue with this it is too round if I press see let's go out of orthographic view or sorry uh, out of wireframe mode Z okay way too wide right if I press 7 on the top uh, sorry on the keypad it takes me to the top view and I can see that it's perfectly round so I'm going to select all of that and scale this time on the Y axis. The green one is the Y. It says right down here. So I'm going to press S, then Y, and it squashes it on that Y axis. I'm going to give it the dimensions of a spoon. Just kind of eyeball that. Looks about right, right there. Okay, looks more like a spoon scoop now. Okay, so we also need to give it some depth, but before we do that, actually, nope, let's do it now. So I've got it all selected, and I need some depth, so I'm going to extrude it, E, on the keypad, on the keyboard, and it only goes up and down until I press S to scale, and I'm going to pull it out. Don't go in, because that's inside out, so pull it out, and we don't want it too thick, it's just a spoon, so we're going to do it about right there is all. And it's kind of poking through on top, so I'm going to send it down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there's my scoop part of the spoon. Now, to complete my spoon, well, it's never complete, but to make it better, um, to make it an actual spoon, I'm going to put a handle on it. So I'm going to deselect everything, and I'm going to come over here to the edge. In fact, I'm going to press three on the keypad. It might be one for you, depending on how you squashed it. Um, so it takes me to the back of the spoon, and I'm going to click on this square here. I'm going to hold down shift and select three others. So I've got four of the faces selected on the back side of the spoon. And then I'm going to come out and extrude it, E, to extrude. And it does something kind of funny. It extrudes it at the angle that those faces were when I extruded it. And I don't want that, that's gonna make for a funny spoon. So I can see that this line right here is the x-axis and I want it to go on the x-axis. So um, after pressing E to extrude, I'm going to uh, select that x-axis by pressing X. 
and then I can pull it out on the x-axis. Now if I click it there and I realize, oop, that's uh, kind of out of proportion, it's not long enough, I don't want to extrude again, you just want to click the arrow and pull it out about as far as you want. Proportions are really important, so we can always make adjustments, but it should look about right, like a normal spoon and handle. And there we go, kind of got a spoon, just doesn't look very good. So we're going to make some adjustments, a few more adjustments to it to make it look like a, an actual spoon. I'm in orthographic view, I'm going to press 5 and get out of that. Perspective view looks a little better to me. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to go back into edit mode, or make sure I'm in edit mode. Press a 1 to go to a side view, and 5 for orthographic view. And I'm going to make some adjustments to make this look a little bit more realistic. So right now, this has got some heavy curve on it, or angle, because it came extruded from the spoon uh, scoop. And so I'm just going to rotate that. R, press R to rotate. I'm just going to bring it flat or close to. It sometimes is angled a little bit. And that made it a little fatter on that outer edge, which actually spoons usually do. But it only went up and down didn't go sideways, so I'm going to um, scale it a little bigger. Press S, and I can make it as big as I want, but it's not going to be very realistic if I'm not careful. So instead of just scaling the whole thing, I'm, I want to scale on this Y axis. So I'm going to press Y also after pressing S to scale. That's just going to scale it out just like that, make it a little wider on the end, which is typical for a spoon pull that out a little more. However, they typically don't just go straight out to the wide edge. Um, so I'm going to do a loop cut to control R. When it's purple, I click on it and pull it back to about right there. And then I'm going to scale that. So S to scale. But I don't want the whole thing to get skinnier. I just want it to scale on that Y axis. So Y after X and it pinches it just a little bit and it'll give it some nice shape once I smooth it out so I if if, uh, if that's too small or too big I can and if I you know am not clicked on it anymore and I want to readjust it I can make sure edge select is selected down here and then I can hold down alt and select one of those edges and it selects the whole ring the whole loop cut and then I can scale it again however I want, bigger, smaller, whatever I want to do with that. And also on this back edge, I can also hold down Alt and select, but it doesn't select the whole thing. So I would probably go back to face select. Actually, you know what? I would probably go to the side view, either one or three. Um, I'm holding down shift and middle mouse click, and that kind of pans the view just like this. And I'd go into wireframe mode Z and A to deselect everything and B to border select. And I would just border select that that uh, edge, all those faces back there. And then I can scale it as much as I want. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit extreme there because when I smooth it, it's going to take it back down. Um, no, that might be a little too much, but we'll see. Okay, looks pretty good. The last thing I want to do, I should have done this first, um, go to a side view, back to wireframe mode, and a border select B. I'm going to select both of those, or yeah, both of those loop cuts. And a spoon is never just flat like that. It's always, the handle's always curved a little bit like that. So I'm going to bring it up a little ways. But this stayed flat, so now I have to deselect A, B for border select, select just the back side, and pull that up as well at whatever angle I want. So probably best to do before I do that loop cut there, but that's okay. We'll get it. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to smooth it out. That's always kind of the final thing. So I'm going to go back up to my wrench, the modifiers tab, click mo add modifier, and come down to subdivision surface. And I just go straight to three on both view and render. And now see my wide edge back there is 
has been tamed quite a bit. Um, I actually might even want to do that a little wider. So I could go back in, go into edit mode, select that in wireframe mode with a border select. It is kind of a process sometimes. But the more you do it, the faster you get at it. And there we go. That's a lot more realistic. Handle, scoop, it's smooth. Um, in fact, I can still smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to come over here to the tools and click smooth. And then it's really nice. And that's a pretty good looking spoon right there.